Hello everyone, good evening and welcome to Moments with God. And today I'm just going to really quickly um, get this on so that, you know, I don't take too much um, time with it. Um, this 6 a.m. this morning in my devotion time, as I was having my morning devotion, as usual, after my worship, I was um, praying and, and then it come to the point where I was praying for our church. I was praying for the church about how I uh, just asking God to to make the church stronger and um, after COVID-19 just as I was praying that and I said to God after COVID-19 what will our church look like I was just asking about our church but then I felt that the Lord started speaking to me about the church the body of Christ as a whole not just my local church and then these are the words he said to me, okay, I'm not a prophet. I'm just someone who goes to God in prayer and uh, listen to him and hear his voice. So um, I'm not um, occupying the office of a prophet. Just so as I've said that, I'll try to get that out of the way. But this is what I felt the Lord begin to minister to me this morning. He said, after COVID-19, COVID, um, there are going to be emergence of new talents, new skills, new gifts. And some people during this lockdown, they've been rediscovering their, their calling. Some people who have laid down the mantles are beginning to pick up the mantles again. And then there are going to be gifts that have been discovered during this lockdown. And what that is going to look like that after COVID-19, and they, they are going to be all these gifts and all this um all these gifts and the talents and the calling that people have been stepping into during the lockdown, they're going to come into the body of Christ. And I saw this picture playing out in my heart when everybody comes in and everybody is itching to start and get started. There was like, you know, they can't wait to get started. And I feel this word really is for leaders for when um, the after COVID-19 and what your church might look like is not something that you are preparing for right now. So I'm just releasing this word so that you will you, you be for one to know what your church might look like after COVID-19. So there are all these people coming into the church, you know, the young, the old, everybody who they are all excited but the, everybody is talking over each other, wanting to 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 um, tell the leaders what they the the where they want to serve and how they want to serve and how what they felt the Lord saying to them. And I felt I was saying in my heart, "Oh, this looks chaotic." But the Holy Spirit said, "With the natural eyes, all this may look chaotic. With with the natural eyes or with um, people with uh, control issues, this may be issues for them." But God said, "I am bringing this." people into the kingdom because this time for harvest is now and all these skills and all these um all gifts and the, the people stepping into their calling are all needed in the body of Christ. And then the second thing that Lord showed me, showed me that there are going to be little churches who have been standing on their own all this time are going to be merging together. But when two churches merge, but remember these are going to be churches who are not from the same stream, who are not from the same denomination. So there's going to be um, denominational issues. They're going to be the way that churches have been done um, uh, pre-COVID 19 that is, is different from each other and i felt the lord is saying that um this denominator i asked the lord how will this be how would this look like how would two different churches um uh, with different streams come together and then i felt the holy spirit said that you know we when this the when this two churches unite and the important thing for these churches to look at is not what separate them it's not their differences but they need to look at what binds them together which is christ who is the center of of all the churches and um and and then the um the bible the the holy spirit took me to um Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4. And Ephesians chapter 4, when I read it, it was so, it just fits in nicely. This is Paul exalting um, the body of Christ to, um, he says, to, to, um, to live the life worthy 
of their calling so i think this one for these people for us who are just will be just be rediscovering ourselves and stepping into our callings and stopping into the giftings and uh, that god has given us and this is to live your life worthy of the calling so that when you come in and uh, you are excited and you're willing to serve and whether which is all well and good and it's also that to make sure you these are not um things to be taken lightly these are not things they come with responsibilities they come with um with um weightiness of god's um, um presence on it so we have to steward it carefully we have to um live a life that's worthy um, worthy of that calling on our lives and then I felt like in this unity will come like new problems. Like I said, that these churches coming together with different ideas, with different denominations, and these two, uh, these um, leaders um, suddenly find themselves only to say, okay, where, where, where is our meeting point here? Where do we meet? So, so what? How are we going to do the worship? How are we going to do the teaching? How are we going to do the prayer service? How are we going to do missions? How are we going to do? It? The Lord said, those are the wrong things to focus on. What you need to focus on is this is a new thing that God is doing. Embrace it and 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 focus on Jesus Christ, who is the center of His church. He is the center of His church. So He is the one who binds us together. It's not denomination. It's not. Um, it's not um, whether you belong to uh, this stream or that stream. But Christ. What has what has bound you together? What has brought you together? Why are you connecting in the first place? Because of Jesus. So he said, focus on Jesus, fix your eyes on Jesus, and then and, and then let the Holy Spirit bring the peace and the unity that you need. And in, in Ephesians chapter 4, uh, uh, the second thing that I picked up from there that the Holy Spirit is saying how to walk this journey of two churches merging together and everybody coming together. He said, do this by being humble. Be humble. Humility means you, you esteem the other above yourself. So if each leader is trying to ex uh, 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 exalt and trying to uplift and try to lift up the other leader above themselves, guess what's going to happen? Christ is going to be glorified in the midst of them. And say, so do this <clears throat> by being humble, being um, patient. So you need to be patient with this newfound, <laughs> you know, excitement in the church. Oh my God, it was so exciting. I still feel excited in my spirit right now. So there's going to be this new excitement. So be patient, you know, in guiding them. In, in, in be patient in leading. Be patient in in drawing them together. In pointing out and don't be afraid to correct. Don't be afraid to discipline. Don't be afraid to pull up. What you don't call wrong right just because you don't want to quench so the bible say here the, the, spirit, the holy spirit say this is where leaders need to be careful that you don't clip the wind but as well as uh, but just um um bringing into alignment so that they grow in the gifting so that they grow in the skills so that they grow in the talents and work in their calling it's uh, that god that they've just um discovered and then the um, <clears throat> so make patient, making allowances for each other's errors because none is perfect and we will never be. So this is going to be really key in uniting um, this, um, the churches together and uniting um, the whole body together is to make allowances for each other's fault. Make allowances for, the, for, your, for, your, for your flock, the flock's making allowances for the leaders and the leaders making allowances for each other and, 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 and um, walking through things in love. And, and then number three was make every effort to unite together in spirit. So unite together in spirit. Look at the things that binds you, not what separates you, by putting Christ at the center. And then the last thing was love one another as Christ loves you and pray for one another. So friends rejoice because post COVID-19 is going to be exciting for the church. It's going to be exciting for the church. This is the time that we have been waiting for. This is the opportunity, the moment that we, we were born for this. We came into the kingdom for this, for such a time. Because out there right now, the harvest 
is ripe. And I was excited this morning at 6.30 a.m. I was excited. I was singing. I was jumping up, jumping in, in, in my prayer room and shouting hallelujah to the King of Kings because it's been too far too long that we've been divided, that we have been turning against each other, that we have been pulling each other down. Church, this is the time to rise up. This is the time to unite. This is the one to, to love one another. This is the one to submit to the correction of the Holy Spirit as we go along. There is no time to waste. There is no time to waste. There is no time to waste. It's time for the church of God to rise up, to rise up and be a mighty force for the kingdom. So I just wanted to release that word, bless you. And I just want to, um, uh, leaders, I just want you to take this word away and weigh it up, obviously. And, um, just read Ephesians chapter four, hear what Paul said about, um, how to walk this, uh, new normal that we are going to be stepping into post COVID-19. God bless you. And may God bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace.